Time now for the news review of this bulletin. Hello, welcome to the News Review. A top U.S. commander says that the Pentagon has decided to reduce the number of American troops in Iraq. Head of the U.S. military's Central Command, Kenneth McKenzie, said that the troops will be cut roughly in half to 3,000 later this month. There are currently 5,200 American forces stationed there under the pretext of fighting terrorism. McKenzie claimed the remaining troops would continue to advise and assist Iraqi security forces. The decision to reduce the troops comes weeks after the Iraqi Prime Minister Mustafa al-Khadimi met with the U.S. President Donald Trump and discussed the drawdown. That's amid growing anti-U.S. sentiment in Iraq, with the people demanding a complete withdrawal of American forces from the country. Edward Corrigan, international human rights lawyer, joins us from London, Ontario. And we also have Media Benjamin, co-founder of Code Pink, joining us from Washington, D.C. I'd like to welcome you both. Media Benjamin, why do you think the U.S. has decided at this time to reduce troops in Iraq? It's very obvious that this is part of Donald Trump's campaign for president. Uh, he is saying that this is part of fulfilling his campaign promise to end the endless wars. Um, we put out a statement today as my group Code Pink saying this is not an end to the endless wars. This is a reduction, but it's not what the American people want. It's interesting that Donald Trump is a good politician. He knows the American people want to see an end to the wars, but keeping thousands of troops in Iraq, especially after the Iraqi parliament voted to expel all troops, is not fulfilling his campaign promise. Edward Corrigan, were you fooled by what Donald Trump has done if we follow the logic that Media Benjamin just now presented? Well, I, I agree with uh, Ms. Benjamin. Uh, Donald Trump is finally taking some action. But uh, as the Iraqi parliament unanimously voted, they wanted American troops withdrawn. So there's been recent attacks on the American troops in Iraq. And, but I think the Pentagon and Trump doesn't want to be seen sort of you know, bowing to the wishes of the Iraqi people. They want to stage their exit under their control as if they're making the decisions and withdrawing for their reasons. But they are hated in Iraq after the assassination of, uh, uh, of Iranian General uh, Soleimani. And of course, the Iraqi generals and a bunch of other people, you know, this is, is terrible. But there's the Iraqi government and Iraqi people do not want the American troops there. But the Americans still are trying to say that they're in control, we're in charge, and we're going to, you know, withdraw on our own terms, which means, uh, you know, from the optics is good for Trump for the election. And it means they're sort of not being driven out of Iraq with their tail between the legs. But, uh, you know, at least it's a start, and it's, it's a good start, but we need to get all the American troops out of uh, Iraq. We need to get, you know, any American troops that are remaining also out of Afghanistan and their allies and start working for meaningful peace and, and understanding that, you know, having soldiers in countries against the wishes of their government and against the wishes of the people is, is not a very good idea. Media Benjamin, uh, Trump has said in the past, we've spent trillions of dollars. What do we have to show for it? Um, and just recently he said uh, about Iraq that, uh, yeah, we're going to be leaving Iraq uh, and we have these lucrative contracts, that uh, oil contracts that have been made with that country. Do you think that type of rationale may be used in other countries uh, in this region, uh, that uh, Trump is uh, just after the money? For example, in Syria, we're looking at the way that, well, they've taken Syria's oil fields without the government there. But are we looking at a reduction in the military activities? Or are they there because, as Trump has also said, they're asking us to stay because they're paying us money? It's, uh, Trump has never um, uh, says very different things. At one point, he says we should go in and take their oil and leave. Uh, yet, on the other hand, he says that his generals uh, who are connected to the military industrial complex and the weapons industry are making it hard for him to leave. The uh, Fox News has quoted a general saying that the U.S. will have, so sorry about that, will have enduring bases uh, in uh, an enduring presence in Iraq. So it doesn't look like the U.S. is leaving anytime soon. And as far as 
the U.S. military being there to secure the resources of other countries. Uh, this has been the role of the U.S. military since the creation of the United States. So I suppose that unless we have a much larger anti-war movement that demands all troops home, not only from the Middle East, but from the 800 bases we have around the world, we will continue to see U.S. troops protecting corporate interests. Trump has portrayed this image, Edward Corrigan, that uh, I want to get out, I don't want wars, uh, uh, stop to these endless wars, but as our guest media Benjamin said, you know, you have these top uh, military manufacturers at the top of the uh, ladder, whether they're the CEOs, who want uh, somewhat for these wars to continue because then they could obviously manufacture their, their, their products. Uh, do you think that there's this, this case, that there's a friction between Trump and them in terms of uh, uh, the, the military, uh, arms, et cetera? Well, Donald Trump was just recently uh, in trouble because he said that all people in the military were, uh, were stupid and that people who got killed were losers. So this created a little bit of a, of a, a firestorm in the United States. And, and according to people who have known him, this is his long-standing uh, attitude towards the military. So he might be trying to, you know, to maintain some ties with the with the, the generals. But yes, the generals have been, you know, uh, they're setting themselves up for pos lucrative positions in the military industrial complex after they retire from active duty. And this is, you know, the trouble with Trump is he, he says one thing and then the, you know, a month later he says the exact opposite. Sometimes a day later he says the exact opposite. So it's really difficult to know what's in his mind and he's scrambling because he's facing a, probably a massive defeat in the upcoming uh, November 3rd election. So he, he's, he's scrambling around, he's trying to do things and he still wants to present the illusion that he's still in charge and it's his timetable, not what the Iraqi people want. And you know, there's uh, pretty well silence on General Soleimani, even though that was a, 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 from a strategic and moral legal point of view, you know, a terrible thing for the Americans to do. And they're going to be facing consequences for, that, for that over years. Thank you for that. Uh, Edward Corrigan, international human rights lawyer. We appreciate it. Media Benjamin, thank you so much. Co-founder of Code Pink from Washington, D.C. Thank you. And that is for our news review. Thanks for tuning in.